I'm Diane Swan, Chief Economist at Grant Thornton, and I'm here with my colleague, Robert Shea, um, who has kept me up to date, um, sometimes multiple times a day, on the policy shifts going on in Washington and how to understand things. We've got the election coming, Robert. No matter who wins, we're going to have some changes in the administration. What are you looking for in terms of, um, say, first, with if the president wins, what kind of changes within his administration will we see? And second, with a Biden win, what kind of changes would we see there? Yeah. Um, thank you, Diane. It's great to be with you. And I'm I'm enjoying our collaboration. Uh, you and I have discussed that the transition planning has been going on for many months. Uh, the Biden team and the Trump team, to some extent, are working away at offices in the headquarters of the Department of Commerce to plan for a smooth transition, no matter what happens. They're coming up with lists of individuals that they want to staff important positions, vetting to them to ensure that they're uh, ready to go to the Senate and be confirmed as soon as possible. That, that's what I'll be looking at is how the, uh, the new president, um, whoever it is, will be staffing uh, the next administration. How does policy, economic policy, move forward under these different scenarios? Until we get the virus under control, we can't get the economy under control. That remains priority number one, no matter who is elected. Uh, Vice President uh, Biden has promised to make that progress. He's promised continued stimulus checks, extended unemployment benefits, an additional $200 to monthly Social Security checks, forgiveness for a minimum of $10,000 per student loan borrower, all this on top of paying for all the coronavirus testing and tracing to ensure that, quote, no one has to pay a dollar out of pocket for COVID testing, treatment, or eventual vaccine. Then there's the debate about what comes next. Let's say we get the virus under control. We've enacted stimulus. The economy's on the mend. If, if Vice President Biden is elected, um, the question is, does he pivot to uh, infrastructure first, climate change, broad tax reform? This is after he's you know revoked uh, executive orders and certain regulations in the first 100 days. What does, he, what does he work with his partners in Congress to enact? And I think it'll be a little bit of of all those things in the first 12 to 18 months. Um, He's made a major priority of climate change. Uh, Infrastructure is part and parcel of climate change. And tax reform has to be part of the levers he uses to enact any part of either of those agendas. Um, But it's a good thing to remind ourselves that even if we're, you know, following a blue wave, Uh, The folks who've given the Democrats the majority in the Senate are not going to be of the Green Deal variety. They're not going to be from the progressive flank of the Democratic Party. And that margin is going to be really, really tight. So there'll have to be an enormous amount of compromise no matter what they're trying to get done. I think a lot of people don't understand the nature of what it would take to flip the Senate. And you've certainly educated me on that. On the flip side, if the Senate doesn't flip and you have um, a Democratic president with a Republican Senate, what? how does that change the calculus here? And also, what would happen if we had, you know, the president win? We don't really have a good sense of what his platform is going forward, but what do you think the most likely priorities of uh, the party would be or the president would be in a second term? If Vice President Biden is elected, but Republicans retain control of Senate. Of course, that's a major barrier to enactment of the vice president's agenda. Um, If President Trump is reelected and uh, the Senate flips Democratic, that is likewise um, greatly slow the president's agenda and adds enormous fuel to the oversight and investigative agenda that has consumed so much time of this Congress. Uh, But should the Republicans retain control of the Senate and the president is reelected, you can see probably a new push for infrastructure. The president has promised to uh, drive greater tax reform uh, to the tune of payroll tax cut, uh, further reduction in corporate taxes. The bipartisan uh, areas of agreement is in, uh, in America First trade agenda. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I, I expect President Trump would continue 
um, advancing U.S. interests on the trade front and look to reshoring a lot of business interests in the United States. And frankly, though he would do it on a much more collaborative basis with our allies, allies I think uh, Vice President Biden would have the same uh, same goals. What do you think the prospects are of COVID being a catalyst for reforms that deal with not only the inequalities that COVID has revealed, but exacerbated? Well, frankly, I think that depends on how the election turns out. Um, I, I'm not sure the Trump administration has an appetite for diving into those issues. Um, but a Vice President Biden election, irrespective of who wins control of the Senate, I do believe will open the door for some uh, systemic um, review of our policies, find out what programs can genuinely focus on those populations that need it the most. Um, but I also think that time uh, attention has got to be diverted to restoring some of our institutions. I don't I don't think uh, that there's an institution girding our democracy that doesn't need some um, restoration. So there'll be some important efforts to, you know, look at our civil service system, our electoral system, um, our, eth- our governmental ethics system. Uh, those are some areas that will need some attention as well. Well, thank you, Robert. Um, I have a feeling the next three months are not going to be anything less um, turbulent and um, full of information than the last three months. I feel like we're all o- o- aging in COVID years here, but I'm glad to be doing it with your help because it helps keep me sane and helps me to see where where things can go. And I really appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you, Diane. Good to be with you.